Jesus said, the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy, but I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. So the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. He could kill you. He could kill a family member in an accident or through abortion. He could kill your dreams. He can kill your marriage. He can steal, steal your money, steal your husband, steal your wife, steal your creativity, steal your job, steal your peace, steal your joy. He can destroy, destroy your life, destroy your health, destroy your home, destroy your clarity, destroy your reputation with people lying and so on and so forth. The enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. There are many ways he can kill, steal and destroy. When we allow the enemy in our lives, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He never comes for anything good. This is why we don't compromise with him. Ever, ever, ever. Whatever is not of God is of darkness. It must leave. That addiction, it must leave. Some people say, yeah, but I'm not ready to let go of it now. And I'll just hold on to it for another month, thinking they're making their life easier by holding on to it for another month. What they're allowing in their lives is the enemy because that is of the enemy and it comes only to kill, steal and destroy. I promise you, you will lose a lot more if you hold on to that for another month. If you hold on to that uh, drunkenness for another month. If you hold on to that masturbation, pornography for another month. If you hold on to that idolatry, that adultery. If you hold on to that fornication for another month. If you hold on to that anger, that jealousy, that pride for another month. Whatever it is that is of darkness, you're compromising with it. Because you think that by doing so, it's making your life easier or I'm not ready to let go of it. When you're holding on to it, you will lose more. The enemy comes only to kill, steal and destroy. Jesus says, but I have come to give you life more abundantly. Your solution is not compromising with the side of darkness. Your solution is Jesus Christ. Always, always, always. Always. God's a gentleman. He will never come in by force. He's a gentleman. And he'll take you by the hand like a gentleman. And he will lead you through it. He will lead you through it. So be anxious about nothing. But in everything with prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving make your request known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Will guide your mind and your heart. God will guide your mind and your heart. Let him lead you. Let him lead you. Stop leaning on your own understanding. The Bible says lean not on your own understanding. But in all of your ways submit to God and he will direct your path. We have limited understanding as humans. Unless we're allowing the Holy Spirit in us to lead us. That's different. God needs to be the one leading every single situation. Every single situation. We don't compromise with the side of darkness, especially if we know that the devil comes to kill, steal and destroy. And Jesus says, I have come to give you life. Why would we not put all of our eggs in one basket here? Why would we not put all of our faith here? Why would we not surrender everything, leave everything, give and surrender all, submit all to Jesus Christ? He's the one that comes to give you life. Not the enemy. Nothing good will ever come from the enemy. The Holy Spirit will convict you in a peaceful way. See, the Holy Spirit convicts in a way that is peaceful and loving. The enemy condemns in a way that is heavy and feeling guilt and shame. One is of God, one is of the enemy. You have to know when it's condemnation. The Bible says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So you know already that's not from God. That heaviness, that guilt, that's not from God. That feeling shame that I've done something wrong so I need to run away from God, that's not from God. We need to be running to God like the prodigal son. Not running away from God like Adam and Eve when they sin so they hid from God. The Holy Spirit will convict you in a way that is, he will convict you of your wrongdoings, not in a way that makes you feel bad and heavy, in a way that makes you feel that is peaceful and loving in a way that makes you feel that I want to make this change because it's of God, because it's holy, because it's pure, because it's for my own good. So the Holy Spirit will convict you where in your life you're not living the abundant life that Jesus Christ came and paid the price for because he came to give you life more abundantly. 
Now, if you're not living that abundant life and you're giving the devil a foothold, he's coming in to kill, steal and destroy. And he's stealing that abundant life from you. That abundant life is already being paid for for you. And you need to take it, receive it, live it, accept it. But if you're not because you're giving the devil a foothold and he's coming in to kill, steal and destroy, it's not that the abundant life is not there for you. It is. You're not accepting it. You're not taking it. You're not walking it. You're not living it. Because you're too busy over here being deceived by the devil. Living and thinking and speaking. <laughs> Showing up in the world in a manner that is of darkness. Could be dark thoughts of, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I don't know how. Uh, my life is not worth living. Mm. Compromising with the things of darkness. You start speaking it. I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm so tired of my life. Uh, then you start to act it out. Oh, so tired. Why is God allowing this? And you start opening the doors to darkness, they start coming in, and you start shh, uh, taking on their characteristics drunkenness, addiction, fornication, rebellion, sin, things of darkness. When Jesus Christ has come to give you an abundant life, abundant life means an abundance of the things that are of God. An abundant life, Jesus says, I am the life. So an abundant life is an abundance of things that are of Jesus. Well, what are the things that are of Jesus? Let's take a look at the fruits of the Holy Spirit found in Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 through 23. Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, patience, self-control, an abundance of these things. So as Christians, we're supposed to be living in an abundance of peace. That's a part of the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. We're supposed to be living in an abundance of love, an abundance of joy, an abundance of patience, an abundance of self-control, an abundance of kindness, goodness, gentleness, and all the things that are of God. Jesus says, I am the life. He came to give you an abundant life. So an abundance of the things of Jesus. Jesus is about healing. Jesus is about deliverance. So as Christians, we're supposed to be living in an abundance of good health, in, in an abundance of freedom from all demonic bondages, freedom from all generational witchcraft, curses, spells, everything. Jesus says, I have come to give you life more abundantly. He is the life. So he came to give you an abundance of the things that, that which are of him. Jesus is about relationship with the Father and abundance of that. Jesus is about, and the opposite, the things of the devil would be, would be the opposite of these things. Sickness, diseases, bondages, uh, spiritual laziness to do the spiritual things of God. Lazy to read the Bible, lazy to pray, lazy, lazy to sit in the presence of God. The opposite of the things. Uh, lack of peace or anger, chaos, lack of love, uh, not feeling love. Instead of love, you're, you're chasing after lust. Um, no freedom, no self-control, uh, compulsion to drunkenness, compulsion to uh, masturbation, pornography, compulsion to lying, stealing, compulsion to drugs, compulsion to thinking negatively, slandering your neighbor, uh, judging, blaming, and so on and so forth. That's the opposite of the abundant life that Jesus came to give you, which is an abundance of Jesus Christ himself. This is why we need to be, have Jesus in us, abide in him, but it's not just have him in us, but that as a ch Sunday church goer, but then live the remainder of the week as we choose, one foot in the kingdom, one foot in the world. No, it doesn't work that way. Because those who think that they can walk one foot in the kingdom and one foot in the world are being deceived by the devil because in essence, they have two feet in the world, two feet in the kingdom of darkness. Um, Jesus says, I have come to give you life more abundantly, an abundance of the things that are of Jesus Christ. A sound mind for God has not given you a spirit of fear but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind so this forgiveness this confusion that's not of God that's not the abundant life that's of the evil one that's not the abundant life that Jesus came and gave you because the abundant life that Jesus came and gave you is clarity of mind a sound mind how can you expect to have all these things though this abundant life when you're not drawing near to God 
Psalm 91 says, He who abides in the secret, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells, in other words, you dwell there, you live there, you're not visiting in and out, in and out, you live there. You know, I talk about the presence of God a lot in my videos. And I teach you how to sit in the presence of God. And it's something that you will have to practice in the beginning. But there will come a time through repetition, through practice, that you no longer have to practice being in the presence of God. Because it's become so natural to you. It's become so normal to you that you are con continuously from morning to night living in the presence of God. That's what it means to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. So Psalm 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So there are two things here. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High then shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, under God's protection, under God's ways. In other words, if you want to abide under the shadow of the Almighty, you have to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. In other words, put differently, if you do not dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you will not abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91 is very clear. He, in other words, only he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Then people turn around and they say, well, why is God allowing this confused mind? Why is God allowing this sickness? Why is God allowing this bondage? Why is God allowing this anger, this hate, this stealing, this fornication, this drunkenness, these drugs? And, and I say to you, why are you not dwelling in the secret place of the Most High? Why point the finger at God? Why not point the finger at you? And the Bible is very clear. Only he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And so, if you're not abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, it is because you, you, are not dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Not because God's presence is not there, God's presence is there. You choose not to. You choose to give in to the temptation of laziness. I want to sit in the presence of God, but I'm going to watch Netflix. I want to read the Bible, but I'm going to eat now. I want to pray, but I'm too sleepy now. Oh. How can you expect to live this abundant life that Jesus Christ came and gave you? If that abundant life is there. But you're away doing other things. Because you're believing the lies of the devil. If you do that, it will benefit you. It's like, it reminds me of Eve. If you eat from that forbidden fruit, your eyes will open and you will be like God. When God clearly told them, if you eat that, you will die. God is clearly telling you, you have an abundant life, you have an inheritance. God is clearly telling you, dwell in the secret place of the Most High so you can abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But yet you're eating that forbidden fruit. Forbidden fruit, whatever that forbidden fruit is for you. It could be drugs, alcohol, what, fornication, whatever laziness whatever you're eating that forbidden fruit Eve would never have bitten in that fruit if she didn't believe the devil over the truth of God that when the devil said there's a benefit in there for you somewhere and that benefit was your eyes will open you will be like God eat she believed the lie over the devil over the truth of God don't eat because the day you eat you shall surely die so where in your life are you believing the lie of the devil over the truth of God? God is saying, the Bible says, the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. It's like saying, don't eat from that fruit. Jesus is saying, but I have come to give you life more abundantly. But yet you're eating over here. That fornication, that lust, that this, that laziness, that whatever. Where are you believing the lie of the devil? You would not do it if you did not believe there's a benefit for you somewhere there. Listen, nothing that comes from the devil can ever, ever, ever benefit you. Never. That's the deception within the deception. Never. I have to stay in that abusive relationship because they're supporting me financially. No, you can't be, be compromising with the side of darkness. 
get out if God is telling you to get out and you will see just how God will take care of you. The Lord will provide. You think it benefits you so you stay. So you continue eating from that forbidden tree. No. And that's just an example. And the, the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. The Holy Spirit will convict you in a peaceful manner where you are not living the abundant life that Jesus Christ paid the price for. The Holy Spirit will convict you in a peaceful way where the enemy is stealing from you, trying to kill, steal and destroy. The Holy Spirit will show you. The Holy Spirit will always show you the red flags. The question is, are you closing your eyes? Because you think you're benefiting by eating from the forbidden tree. Are you? Has, has God told you get out of that relationship and you're closing your eyes? Has God told you relocate and you're closing your eyes? Has God told you tithe somewhere, give a, a financial offering somewhere, but you're closing your eyes? Has God told you Stop being jealous of that person, but you're closing your eyes. Has God convicted you that that anger is not from him? That jealousy, that pride is not from him, but you're closing your eyes. Has God told you help that person, whether financially, emotionally, physically, and you're closing your eyes? You know, the Holy Spirit will convict you where you're not living an abundant life. The Holy Spirit will convict you where the enemy is stealing from you. You see, your living must always happen from a place of the truth of Jesus. Jesus says, I am the truth. You're living, you're thinking, you're speaking, your your actions, your deeds, your, 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 the way you live your life must always, always, always come from a place of the truth of Jesus Christ. You're free, you're healed, you're, you're made in the image of God. I have come to give you life more abundantly. You are perfectly and wonderfully made. You are a child of God. You are heirs to God, co heads with Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every truth that's in the Bible. I don't have to go through. We will, we will be here six months. We will be here six months anyway. But that's through. Slowly through each video. Anyway. Um, Jesus Christ has given you the truth. Okay. You must be living every day. Thinking, speaking and living every day. From a place of truth. And that's when Jesus Christ gets released. His power starts working in you. His, his power starts getting released through you. Transforming you from the inside out. And you're the light of the world. You're the salt. So then it radiates out of you. Transforming family members. Transforming friends and colleagues and territories. Atmospheres and so on and so forth. That's when the kingdom gets released through you. When the gospel is preached, the gospel happens. When Jesus is preached, Jesus manifests. When the tr truth is preached, the truth happens. Suddenly you start to see sicknesses being healed, chains breaking, marriages being restored, sins being forgiven. When the gospel is preached, the gospel happens. God will confirm what you speak about Jesus. Speak up in Jesus' name. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my saviour. The blood of Jesus has cleansed me. By his stripes I have been healed. Jesus came and set the captives free. Jesus came and set me free. And so on and so forth. You get the picture. Think every thought. Speak every word. Take every action with care and intention. That you are speaking from Christ's truth. That you are speaking from a place of Jesus Christ. That you are speaking from a heavenly pray place. And that's when the presence of Jesus becomes so prominent in you. God will always confirm what you speak about Jesus. Speak up in Jesus' name. Now, if this ministry is blessing you and the Spirit is putting it up on your heart to bless back, donation, donation offering link is below. God loves a cheerful giver. My books can be purchased below. Worldly Life of Deception, Who is God, Spiritual Warfare, New Age Occult to Jesus, to Jesus Christ, This is Grace. Links are below. God bless you.